So I want to show an example of using a pre-trained model off PyTorch Hub. On the home page, I'm going to click into Vision, see if I can find anything interesting there. And maybe I'll take this YOLO panoptic driving perception network. So what it does is it takes in some image and it produces the segmented road and lines. So here's an example of how I'd use that. Pretty simple. And in here, I'll just get started with that example. So first thing was import torch, set the model equal to torch.hub.load. So that's all I've got to do to load in the model from Torch Hub. I just specify the GitHub repo where this model is stored, the name of the model which I want to use, and then whether I want the pre-trained weights or not. Let's just check that that all runs correctly. It's downloading the model. I've got an error here, I'm just gonna look it up. Looks like I just pip install it. I'm going to restart that and try it again. Again, I need to install more stuff. CV2 has a different name, I think. Something like that. Nice. Well, now it seems to have run. So I've got no errors and I've gone through all that. So what does the example show next? It says get an image. Uh, in this case, they've just got a random image and then you get out of these different things. So it looks like the, what is that? Detection output, DA seg out, LL seg out. I imagine that this is what's detected in the image, whether it's cars or people, etc. This looks like the segmented road and that looks like the lanes i imagine that's what the l's for but could probably find this out better if i looked at the github repo so traffic object detection result drivable area segmentation result lane detection result so those are the three different things which i should get back from my model's prediction and a bunch more details in that github repo so let's just use their random image firstly and see if we can get a prediction from that and then we'll use a real image. Cool, that seems to work. Let's take a look at what those outputs are. Debt out, what does that look like? Okay, it's a big tensor. That's actually, yeah, it's just a list of tensors. So let's just print, type debt out to prove that. Okay, yeah, that's a list. So the first thing in that list is a torch tensor. Let's print its shape, just to get an idea of what we're dealing with. And it says torch.size. I don't want the type of that, do I? I actually want the shape. So there's the shape of the output. So what does that represent? It's not the same size as my random input image, is it? But it does have three channels, like my input image. So as usual, in this GitHub repo, there's an example, or not an example, but there's a file called demo in tools. And in there, you can get an idea of how they're using the model. So they get this network, they make a prediction, but that's a throwaway variable there. So here's where they make a prediction with the model. They get the detections, the drivable area, and the lane segmentation. And then they go through all of this processing to get to the point where they use a function called show segmentation result to show the image. So this actually looks like a rather complicated bit of code to write down. So I'm not going to go through all that, but I will just try and at least pass one of my own images through the model to show you how you could do this without random data. But to look into exactly what this shape represents, I reckon probably best to go through this example and take a look at the paper. But the point I want to get to is just, can we use the model to get a prediction? So it seems like everything's coming out all right, no errors so far. I've got a image which should be appropriate for this. 
it's an image of the road like that, so I hope we can get a useful prediction. But let's just try and pass it through the model at least to start with. So let's load it in with pill. I'm going to name that something more friendly. Just check that that worked correctly. All right, my bad. I actually just wanted the file path, not the file itself. But there it is. It's been opened by Pill. So yeah, nice. I can read that in using Python. That's good. So now I want to turn it into a torch tensor. So from torch vision, I'll import transforms. And then I will use transforms dot to tensor, which converts a pill image to a tensor. I'll initialize that transform, call it T, and then I'll call that transform on my image. I'll call this features like that. And then I'm going to try and not pass the random image in, but I'll pass in my features from the model. So let's see if this works. I know I'm going to hit an error to start with. Uh, first one, obvious one, transform's not defined, need to run that cell. Then I'll run this. The image yeah, has opened over here. And then let's try and make a prediction. We'll see what goes wrong. Cool. So now we've got this big error. It says, given groups, weight size of this is expected, an input of size this, to have 12 channels, but got three channels instead. So what is going wrong there? Well, if I put my image back there, the random image, which I know is the correct size, just as a reference, it's probably something to do with this features not being the correct size. So let's try and get it into this format firstly. So remember the first dimension always represents the batch dimension. That's how many examples I wanna process at once. And then I've got three, that's probably three channels because these are color images, RGB, three, three channels. And then the size of the image looks like it's gonna be 640 by 640 pixels. So I probably need to change this. Let's take a look at features.shape first. Run that. So right now it says it's three by 675 by 1200. So yeah, that's, that's pretty wrong. So definitely not what it looks like there. So I need to do two things, I need to one, add another dimension in the zeroth position, and then I need to reshape these two so they're both equal to 640. So to do that, I can use, so I'm just gonna transform this, I'll say features is equal to features uh, dot unsqueeze. And unsqueeze, what that's gonna do is it's going to add a dimension of size one in a particular position. So now if I, now, if I print before and after unsqueezing, we should see the difference. Uh, okay, I need to specify which dimension I want to unsqueeze. I'll unsqueeze the zeroth dimension. Run that again. It's opening so many of these images on my other screen, so I'm going to stop that. But now you can see, yeah, I've unsqueezed the zeroth position dimension. And so now I'm looking closer to where I want to be for the size of this image. And then I need another transform, which is going to be to resize it. So I'll call this one R. These are not great variable names. Um, and so in fact, I'll do better than that. So resize. And then I'm going to pass in the size as the first parameter. Because it's only one parameter, I could probably guess that it's going to be a tuple. So I'll say 640 by 640. That's what my ex reference example was given. And then after I've called my transform to tensor on that image, I will also call the resize transform on that, on those features. Okay, cool. So that, that looks better, right? So my output now is of the right size as the reference is the same size. I'm not sure whether it's cropped the image when it resizes it or squished it. So let's just take a look at that. To do that, I need another transform to get it from a tensor to a pill image. Again, you can find that in torchvision.transforms. Let's 
So that should return me a pill image, which has a show method. And I need to do this after. This is just me checking that everything works at this point. So now the image looks like this. It's been squished, it looks like. If I compare that to the image before, which actually, helpfully, is still open. There's about 10 of them on my other screen. You can see that that's what it looked like before. That's after resize. So it's just been squished down. So that, that might screw up the behavior of the model a bit. I probably, instead of a resize, I should have done a crop and just cropped out kind of the top left region of the image or a random region of the image. But that would be pretty easy to change. I would just change this resize. Um, but right now, I'll just see if I can get this through the model now and then see if I've cleared this issue which I was getting here, which was something to do with shapes before we get too sidetracked. So cool, I don't need that anymore. I've tested that. It looks like everything's the right size. I'm gonna run that just one more time and check where I'm at. Good, try and call the model on that data. Doing something and it seems to have run successfully. So now if I just print the output, yeah, you can see I've got an output similar to what it looked like before. I can't tell exactly what that is and I'll leave you guys to look into the very detailed specifics of how this particular model works in the paper and using this example in the GitHub repo. But what I've done there is I've taken an image off the internet and I managed to pass it through a pre-trained model. Those models are extremely valuable and expensive to train. I probably couldn't have trained it, certainly not on my laptop. I probably wouldn't have the time or, um, or the patience. And so I've just got off the shelf, trained that, and now I could be doing interesting work looking at how to improve the performance for panoptic uh, image segmentation on cars. So really interesting stuff.